Hey there. In this beginner tutorial, we will look into all the essentials of Figma constraints and resizing. So let's waste no time and get straight into it. So if we look at what constraints and resizing actually is, it's a relationship between a parent frame and a child frame, or a parent frame and a child element. So here we have the parent, which is a frame that contains this element that I named child in here. What I like to imagine when it comes to the constraints section here in the right sidebar, depending on what you set in those settings, the child is gonna behave in the way you want. So if you set it to, for example, left on the horizontal axis, and then top on the vertical axis, you can see that we get these strings here that attaches to the top and the left of the parent frame. What I like to imagine here is that this child is taking a grip in the top and a grip to, I guess, the left, but it's gonna be the right for you in the camera, and it's gonna hold on to that. So now, if I start resizing this, this child is gonna hold on to the left and to the top. I'm gonna go through all of these. So let's go from top to bottom. We take right and we take bottom. You can see that those strings now are attached to the right and to the bottom. So could you guess what happens in this case? Well, if I start resizing this, the child is gonna hold on to those sides that we picked, okay? So if we go to the left and right, here on the horizontal axis and the top and bottom. If we start resizing. Oh, it's gonna expand here because it's holding on to both sides, right? So if it's holding on, it's gonna be slow. So the same goes for the vertical axis. Like that. Let's jump to center on both axes. I think you can guess what happens. Yes, it's gonna stay in the center, just like that. And then we have the last option, which is scale. So I put it to scale on both axes here. When you think about it, what happened with top and bottom, top and bottom, left and right, is that it kind of scaled, right? When we changed up the size of the frame, the parent frame, the child scaled. But there is a subtle difference between these. If we take a look here. So now when I scale this, drag it to the right, you see it kind of looks similar, but it's not as, it's something that's different, right? So if we go back to the child element and we take left and right, top and bottom, and I just create a little rectangle here, just to see, I want to see the space. So this is 813 pixels wide. So now if I remove this again, so I've copied it, but I remove it, stretch it out, I paste it in again, drag it back there, it's still 813 pixels. So it maintains the same pixel distance. If we go back and I change this to scale, I do the same thing again, and then I paste in this. So here we can see that it actually doesn't maintain the same pixel distance. So what happens here is when you choose scale, it's gonna convert it into percentages instead. And this distance is gonna be a percentage distance from the object to the right side in this case. So therefore the pixel distance won't stay the same. So that's a difference you can keep in mind when you have scale or when you're gonna choose between scale and left and right or top and bottom. So here we have something called clipping. This is actually not part of the constraints panel or the constraints section, as you can see, but I think it's still useful to, to um, go into. What you can see here is that we have a frame, a parent frame, once again, with a child element. But this child element is currently cut off. Now, in order to make it be seen again, I can go to the clip content and uncheck that. And now it's gonna be seen, even though it's going outside of the frame. But if I click the parent frame and I check the clip content, it's gonna be clipped. So that's a good thing to know because when we 
want to prototype things, for example, we go to the next frame here. We want to prototype, for example, a scrolling experience. Then having clip content is very essential. If we look at this frame, it looks like just a normal frame. But what we've done here is that we've clipped some content in this frame. So if we unclip, you can see this text popping up here in the bottom that says bottom. The reason for this is that we want to create this scrolling experience, right? If we click the content again, we go into prototype. So the prototype tab and we click on the parent frame and we can see that currently we don't have flow. We would need to add a flow starting point here in order for it to be a prototype. So I add that. Now we have a flow and you can see that overflow scrolling here is set to vertical scrolling. Now, if we would go back to this frame and I would increase the size of this frame so that this bottom text is within the frame and we go back to prototype, you're going to see this little thing popping up here saying that for scrolling to work on this frame, the content needs to be bigger than the frame. So in order for us to create a scrolling experience in Figma, we need to clip the content. If I drag it up here again, you can see that it disappears. Drag it down, now it appears again. Just to show you how it works in action, I'm gonna clip the content again. I'm gonna set this to fixed position on scrolling. And we've set the constraints here as well. Now, if we click the parent frame, hit the prototype tab, click play, we click play. Hello, sir. Can I play this, please? Oh, temporary outage. That's peculiar, isn't it? Hello, darkness, my old friend. Okay, we're back. The technical difficulties are over with, I hope. Let's look at the prototype. You can see here, if I scroll to the bottom, we come to the bottom and we see the bottom text. So really what I wanted to show with this is the fixed positioning when scrolling in the constraints section here. So that's what it does. We fix the positioning of this, this circle here. And when we scroll, it's gonna be fixed in the middle of the screen. So you can see that it's fixed because we reach a bottom point of the frame. Anyways, let's go on and touch the last thing. So this is more of a realistic case here. So we have a top navigation, we have a couple of rows in the middle, and we have a footer. Now, what it looks like when it's not going to be responsive is this. Nothing is happening to the layout as I shrink it or increase the size of it. So what do we do in this situation? Let's start with the top navigation. If we go to the top navigation and we look at these little drop downs that we've been talking about, we look at the top one, it says just that it's holding on to the left side, but we want it to hold on to both sides, right? Left and right. It's holding on to the top and that's okay. That works for us. So now if we resize this, look at that, it's working. And the rows, this is also pinned to the left. We want it to hold on to both sides and now it's pinned to the bottom, but we want it to be pinned to the top in this case as well. Same for this one, left and right and top. Now let's see how it works. Hey, it's working. Nice. And then we have the footer, which is going to be pinned to the bottom and left and right. Hey, there we go. A responsive layout. Super easy, super easy. I really hope that was helpful. Now, if you're wondering about auto layouts as well, I have a video on that somewhere here. Check that out. I'm going through all the auto layout details in there. So I think that could be helpful. YouTube just launched this new feature where you can like and subscribe and even comment and push the bell notification button. Okay, it's not really a new feature. But if you would utilize it here on my channel, I would be so grateful. Until next time, my friends, have a good one. Talk soon.
Ciao.